Now, there are few doctrines that are more generally misunderstood than true prayer, by the way. That sounds so simple, so common, and yet, does prayer really change things? Does God change his mind as a result of believing prayer? Or does God move us to pray? If he changes his mind, maybe it was his initiative that caused us to pray to make him change his mind. I personally believe prayer is God's way of enlisting us in what he's doing. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? That's a question I'll let you dwell on a little bit. Who can pray and how do you pray? Can and, and any, why, sh, uh, why should a person pray anyway? These are all good questions for your discussion groups. I'll let you uh, wrestle that through. In any gathering of God's people, these questions are likely to generate different and even contradictory answers. And I'll let you experience that. Prayer is talking with God. It is exclusively for believers only. The only prayer God hears and answers is one that is made through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Boy, is that exclusionary? Absolutely. Make no apology for that. He is not one way among several. He is the only way. As in all conversations, we must know people well before our conversations can really flow freely. So it's important for you to have a relationship with him. Learn about him. Spend time with him. Boy, we could spend a lot of time just on those issues. There are barriers to prayer. Clinging to some sin in your heart. No, you should come clean to him. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, the psalmist tells us, Psalm 66. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Isaiah 59, first two verses. Are you too soiled to present yourself before the throne? Is that possible? Remember the Christian's bar of soap. John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice whose faithfulness is being dealt with there. It's His faithfulness I can rely on. If we confess sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins because He promised He would and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, you pray for others. We call that intercession. Fancy word for simply praying for others. It's the heavy artillery in the armory of God. If you're going to be in the ministry, make sure you've got people interceding for you. We never know when the Spirit may move us to hold up a brother or sister in a time of need. And we are inevitably astonished to discover the implications of what may seem but a whisper before the throne room of the universe. Dan and I were in a, one of the KI meetings, Coining Institute meetings, and uh, an elderly gentleman came up to Dan about some other issues too, but he happened to mention with tears in his eyes, his teaching assistant had recently called him on the phone. And um, the uh, 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 out of blue, just the TA, called him because she felt moved by the Spirit to do so. And what she didn't know, but the gentleman, the elderly man was telling Dan, what she didn't know was it happened to be a very tough day for him because of the one year anniversary of his wife's death. And out of the blue, she called to pray with him and so forth. And uh, Dan says, gee, <laughs> would you like to meet her? Because the TAs be people you know just because you're in a virtual classroom on the internet and so forth. And because uh, she happens to be here. And he said, Really? And it turned out that Veronica, the gal involved, 19 year old gal, called her over. And here, the 75 year old guy, <laughs> both of them with tears, that meeting for the first time, but how God used her 
spoke, the Spirit spoke to her, the caller, and so forth. And uh, let me give you another example. Trish is a neighbor of ours who happened to be visiting. We, we, live, we live in Coeur d'Alene. The neighbor was visiting New Zealand. And during the Sunday church service in New Zealand, she became overwhelmed with the need to pray for my wife, Nancy. And she did. When she returned to the U.S. and they were comparing notes, they realized that during the church service in New Zealand, it was 5 p.m. Saturday, August 1st, first in the United States, the very time that our firstborn son died from a stroke while jogging. It's a very dark time for us. But Trish, having no knowledge of that, was moved by the Spirit in New Zealand to pray for Nan. And is it, so there is a verse. This all leads up to a verse that you want to memorize. In, in the Philippian letter, there's probably a dozen of those that you might want to mark for yourself. You can pick the ones you like, but here's one that you certainly want to include. And that's Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious. Be careful is the way it's in the King James. The word actually means anxious. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And uh, be care, anxious. This is God's cure for anxiety. Experts tell us that stress is one of the most destructive forces in the human predicament. Worry, some people call, say worry is assuming a responsibility that God didn't intend for you to have. One of my favorites is worry is the, a trickle of fear passing through the mind which soon cuts a crevice so deep that it drains all other thoughts away. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Everything. There's nothing trivial between you and your Father. There's no concern you have that is too small to not bring to His attention. He wants to hear from you, like any good father would. And what follows 4, 6, 4, 7? And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in or through Christ Jesus. That doesn't promise that you'll receive what you ask for. God knows what our real needs are better than we do. We must also remember to praise God for the prayers that He doesn't answer. <laughs> and the example that's often pointed out, and that's when you go back to a high school reunion. <laughs> and you be reminded of the prayers that you were intense with back then that you're glad he didn't answer. <laughs> but I, I'll leave it there and we'll move on. Romans 8.28, and we all know this. I have my Bible tab so I can always find this quickly. I check it once a day sometimes. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to notice that's not true for everybody. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. The three most important words in that verse are the first three. We don't suspect. We don't hope. No, no. We know that all things. We know that all things work together for good for them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Thank you.